Hi, in Adapt Trade Builder, the user is responsible for providing the price data. Since the program works with specific trading platforms, it's expected that the user gets their price data through either your trading platform or through the data provider you use for your platform. So generally, the first thing you want to do is go to your platform and save or export any price data that you want to use within Builder. It's always recommended to use the same data in Builder that you use when trading your strategy or at least when you backtest the strategy in your platform. So you'd want to save that data or export it to some sort of text file like TXT or CSV type file. Assuming you've done that, then you want to add it to the symbol library in Builder. To do that, you either right click and select add new symbol or simply click the add new symbol button in the symbol library. The symbol library is independent of your project files. Once you add the symbol to the symbol library, you can use it in any project you might uh, use in Builder. So you click that add new symbol button and it opens a file selection window. And down here it gives you choices for the type of files you want to open, text files, CSV, or you can simply select all files. So let's just select as an example this this CSV file. CSV is comma comma separated variable format. You can get that from an Excel file, for example, by saving your Excel file to a CSV. So we double click on that and it opens that file directly in the so-called data file format window. This displays the data that it reads from your file and shows you the columns of data as it sees them. Now since this is a CSV file, it's separated and the fields are separated by commas. So down here under delimiters I've checked the uh, comma box. If I don't you'll see that it's it doesn't properly separate the data into columns. And if you have data that's separated by tabs, you can click the or select the tab button or in some cases they'll be separated by semicolons or spaces. So you can select those buttons as necessary. Now it tells you basically what you need to do right here. It says click the column headings to identify the data file contents or select a saved format. I've previously saved several formats, standard US English for example, or the file of uh, data, uh, data file format that typically goes with a Meta, Meta uh, Trader 4 data file. But we'll just do it from scratch this time. And so basically your first step is to, is to select labels for these columns. So let me just click this clear column heading button so we start with blank columns. And the idea is you click each column in turn and select the label that corresponds to the data in the column. So this first one is date, so we select date. And then time. And each time I'm just double clicking on this entry in the list of column labels. And then I know that it's open, high, low, and close. So you have to know what these columns represent. If there's a label, in the first line of your file. It doesn't read those labels. You, it, it just ignores that first line, but it, that could help you to, to identify what those columns represent. Now here I know this is represents the, um, the tick data, the tick volume. And so this is up tick volume. And this is down tick volume. Uh, oftentimes there'll just be one column for the volume. If there's two columns like this, uptick and downtick volume, there's an option here that says if you don't have a volume column, then basically add up this uptick and downtick to get total volume. And that's what this, che this checkbox is for. And so that's the first step. Now, if you want, you can save these settings right now just by clicking this Save button for future use. But the other step is to uh, is to what it says here to specify the date and number format using the specified data format button. So basically you need to tell the program how to interpret the data in each column. So there's three types of data it needs to understand date, time, and number. And so to tell it how to interpret those 
numbers, you click this Specify Data Format button. And this opens the Data Format window. And there are basically two ways to do this. The easiest way, if it works, is to use a locale. The most common locale is, is typically English, United States. But this pull-down gives all the locales that, that Windows, the Windows operating system, recognizes on your computer. And the locales contain all the formatting information for numbers, dates, and times. So if you have something simple like English US, you can just select the locale and you'll be good to go. If you have something more complicated and you don't know what the corresponding locale is, then click this option that says Use Custom Format. And again, if you have done this before, you can save the format using the Save Format button. Then you can bring that up uh, in this case. Like if I have data saved from MT4, it's typically in this format where you have year, month, day, and the fields are separated by periods. And uh, time consists of hours and minutes separated by a semicolon. 24-hour time rather than 12-hour time. And then numbers are just with a decimal uh, symbol as a period and a dash for the minus sign. But whatever it is, you can choose this formatting here. If it's a two-year date instead of four-year date, you would check this box. You can pick a, a backslash as the date separator, period, dash. In some cases, it might be a, a space, with however your numbers are formatted. And then you pick the format here for year, month, day, day, month, year, month, year, day, etc., whatever it happens to be. Likewise, for time, you can pick generally just between hours, minutes, or hours, minutes, and seconds. But you have to tell it what it is. In some cases, there's no separator symbol, so you would check this box. And you can see how the, the format changes. And it might be 24-hour or it might be 12-hour. If it's 24-hour, there's nothing else. You're done with the time. If it's 12 hours, then you have to uh, pick the AM and PM symbols which can also be a custom symbol if it's not just a standard AM or, or uh, A dot, M dot. And then likewise with the numbers, some, some uh, countries use commas as a decimal symbol. Occasional, occasionally you'll see an apostrophe. If there's something else, you can add the custom symbol here. And likewise with the negative symbol for, the, for minus numbers, negative numbers. So once you've done all that, and we're just going to use the locale in this case, but if once you've done all that, you click the OK button. And now it should have everything it needs. Between the column formats and the number format, when you click OK, it's going to read the file and process it. And then the first thing to check when you get to this window, the symbol properties window, is the date range. So it'll show you the first available and last available dates that it reads from the file. And you should check these to make sure they make sense. And so I know from that data file that these numbers, or these dates are correct. These are the first and last dates in the file. And then you can type whatever you want for the symbol. And likewise, you can type in, in a symbol description. And then the symbol type can be stock futures forex or an external equity curve. And that's explained in the user's guide if you're not familiar with, with what that means. And then you need to set the bar type to one of these values. And in this case, the data is 15 minute bars, so that means intraday. And it'll try to infer the bar size and some of these other values from the file. If it gets them incorrect, you need to make sure you change them so that they're correct on this window. These, these fields should all match the data in the file as it appears in the, in the uh, raw data file that you're reading in. And the session start and end times, it'll also read the file, scan the times, and try to get those correct. And uh, it takes into account the bar size. So for example, the first bar time 
and this file I believe is 9.45 so it knows it's 15 minute bars which means the session start time is 9.30 because the bar time represents it assumes that the bar time represents the close of the bar now if any of these things are not correct you can change them here point value for stocks or futures is or stocks or forex is one excuse me for futures you have to know what the point value is you should be able to if you don't know that already you should be able to get that either through your platform your broker or through the exchange website tick size and bid ask spread generally the same and they'll try to infer those from the file again you can change those if necessary if you're not, if you're not familiar with the price band size and how that works uh, that's typically for uh, for futures you can read about that in the user's guide if you need to the trading costs this is a default value for the costs on symbol properties this is just a a default value that that um, will show up if you don't add costs elsewhere but you should always set the costs on the build symbols window before building or on the evaluation symbols window before evaluating and then this is the type of cost whether it's amount per share amount per trade or percent of trade and now the the last important thing to keep in mind is that once you get all these settings correct and you've made all the correct settings on the data file format window you can verify the format on this window by clicking the view data button if everything is correct then view data should show the data as it's uh, shown in your data file because this is basically using all those settings to read the data file and process it and display it so if it doesn't show up correctly here in under view data there's a problem with one of your settings you need to go back and, and modify your settings if everything looks correct here for example we see the first date first time all this data looks correct I can scroll down to the bottom and the final date time and data look correct so I have a pretty good idea that this is the uh, the correct formatting and everything is correct and that's it you just click OK and now this will show up in this symbol library and I can move this to wherever I want if I want to move this into one of these other folders I can do that if I want to create a new folder um, I can click this new folder button create a new folder and then add the symbol to that folder and then I can click this button to uh, add the symbol to the build or I can click the view data button again which brings up that that same view data window and so on so and clicking this properties button will open that property symbols window again so that's it for adding data to the symbol library please see the other videos for other aspects of using the program thanks very much